So today we're going to be talking about cell respiration, specifically about glycolysis. So cell respiration can be defined as the controlled release of energy from organic compounds to produce ATP. And ATP basically stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it's a high energy molecule that functions as a power source for the cells. So just out of interest, I don't think this is on the syllabus, but adenosine triphosphate is made from an adenine group. A ribose, and as the name suggests, three phosphates, triphosphates. And these bonds are very high energy. This is ATP. So there's two main different types of cell respiration. Firstly, we have aerobic respiration. And this occurs in the presence of oxygen. It's the complete breakdown of organic compounds for a larger yield of ATP, a larger yield of energy. So the equation for this is glucose, or whatever organic compound we're dealing with, plus oxygen, because again, it's in the presence of oxygen, to produce carbon dioxide gas, which is a waste product, water, and most importantly, lots of ATP. Then we have aerobic rest, sorry, anaerobic respiration. And anaerobic respiration is the incomplete breakdown of organic compounds for a smaller yield of ATP. It's only really used when our body is lacking oxygen or needs a lot of energy in a short amount of time. For example, when you're exercising and your body, like gas exchange in your lungs isn't happening fast enough, so you're not able to take enough oxygen in. Um, as a result of this, you cannot aerobically respire, but your muscles still need the energy. And so your body resorts to anaerobic respiration. The formula for this is glucose, into lactic acid plus a small amount of energy. So the main organic compound used in cell respiration are carbohydrates or glucose. However, lipids and proteins can also be used, but they're not preferred because lipids are harder to transport and digest and proteins release nitrogenous compounds, which if you remember from the kidneys unit, nitrogenous compounds are toxic to the human body. So we actually need to remove them as urine. So it's just a bit inefficient for us to create even more nitrogenous waste than that we then have to remove. So the first step of both aerobic and anaerobic respiration is glycolysis. And glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. So Glycolysis is basically the process by which a hexose sugar, meaning six carbons, generally glucose, is broken down into a triose sugar, three carbons, which is called pyruvate. So the process of glycoly glycolysis has many steps. However, in our syllabus, we only need to know four main ones. So first, I'm just going to draw a diagram to demonstrate the overall process, and then I'm going to go into each step in more detail. You don't need to memorize this diagram as long as you understand the steps. It's also good to um, show this in an exam potentially because it's a good way to um, explain a more abstract con concept in a more visual way.
So the first step is phosphorylation. Glucose is phosphorylated, meaning that phosphate groups have been added to it. And this process requires two ATP molecules, meaning that it actually requires an energy input. And this forms um, this molecule, which is a hexose biphosphate. And again, you don't need to memorize that, right? Because we have six carbons here and two phosphates, which makes hexose biphosphate. The second step is lysis. And lysis is basically when this hexose biphosphate is split into two triose phosphates. And again, we've got our three carbons and our one P. So the third step is oxidation, and hydrogen atoms are removed from each of these triose phosphates um, by oxidation to reduce NAD plus to NADH plus H. Um, and NAD plus is basically a hydrogen carrier, which is used um, in later parts of aerobic respiration, which will probably be, ex be explained in another video. So Basically, two molecules of NADH are produced in total, one from each of the triose phosphates. The fourth step is ATP formation. So again, basically, the triose phosphates are phosphorylized, meaning that, again, they gain another phosphate group. Um, four molecules of, NRT, of ATP are generated from this process. as some of the energy released from the sugar intermediate is directly used to synthesize this ATP. So basically, by the end of glycolysis, three main things have happened. Firstly, glucose has been broken down into two molecules of pyruvate. Secondly, two hydrogen carriers have been redu reduced by oxidation. Basically, NAD plus has been reduced into NADH. Plus H plus. And again, this happened twice. Thirdly, a net total of two ATP molecules were produced, as four were generated. However, if we remember, two were used at the beginning. So that's four minus two, which is two. So based on the present, based on the availability of oxygen, this pyruvate may be either subjugated to aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. So obviously if oxygen is present, then the pyruvate is transported to the mitochondria in the cell for further breakdown, which is complete oxidation. Um, and this means that three additional processes will, will happen. The link reaction, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, which will be explained in upcoming videos. If oxygen is not present, however, anaerobic respiration happens. So the pyruvate is not broken down further and no more ATP is produced, meaning that incomplete oxidation occurs. The pyruvate remains in the cytoplasm and is converted into lactic acid in animals or ethanol and CO2 in plants and yeast. Thank you for listening and I hope this video helped. Bye.